Hey guys, this is Action Jackson 95 um, I feel like I owe y'all an explanation why I haven't made any videos lately. That's because a lot of shit has been happening around here. Obviously, um, some of y'all know that I'm from Texas and I live in Houston, so Hurricane Harvey has actually done quite a bit of damage, but everything's fine. Um, but it's been delayed because of that. Second, my mom is still sick, so I'm taking care of her. Third, school has started, so... All three of these together kind of makes a shit show, so that's why I've been very busy, but I'm just going to cut to it. Um, I'm still writing. I'm still getting a bunch of shit done with my videos. Um, just to, Let's just get things going. I'm, this is like a vlog of my updated collection I've done last month and a little bit of this month. Uh, my collection is still growing. I even got one uh, new game that really helps me get close to finishing my collection. But I'll save that for last, because of course, it's just how it is. But I've just been collecting a bunch of games. A lot of Nintendo 64 and a few NES. I do have a lot more coming in the mail. I just feel like this was the perfect time to just get it going with, because I haven't made a video. But um, I guess we might as well start with it. Here we go. So we got Shockwave. It is factory sealed. Um, there, as you can see. I don't really care much for this game, honestly. It's kind of boring, in my opinion. Like, it starts off okay, but AGCI just kind of... It's kind of a shitty company to me. I mean, they are on license, yeah, so that, that, that that's kind of a given. But, like, this is, like, not even, like, funny bad. This is just kind of boring. But, yeah, it's factory sealed. It looks nice, you know. I like it. The artwork's cool. I'll give it that. All right, so that's out of the way. And then... Uh, then we have... Death Race complete in box. Ooh, let me get that box protector out of the way. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is probably the cleanest Death Race I've ever seen in my life. It's so clean. Look at that. It's nice. Everything about it is nice. Um, like a, Just to keep people who are new to this video, I actually do have every unlicensed game except Cheatham 2, Myriad 6 and 1, um, a few Panesian games, and Light Gun Game 3 and 1. I'm completing them, though. I'm trying to get a complete collection now. And I did. So basically, I have two Death Races now, but this is the complete one. Same for Shockwave. Um, and same for these right here as well. So, uh, here is... No, let's do this one. Here is the Ultimate Stuntman, complete in its box. It's actually, um, pretty cool. This one... I've never really seen this before, but it actually comes with the poster. I didn't even realize that this had a poster. But yeah, it's basically just the front of the game, but cool nonetheless. Yeah, that's me right there. I pose for that, and you know, I think I look pretty good. Um, yeah, this game, again, is it's not that good. I really hate how hard this game is, because it can be somewhat enjoyable, but... The fact that if you're dead, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I got an upper respiratory infection, but <coughs> but the fact that if you die and you have to restart all the way over from the beginning, that shit fucking sucks. I don't really like that game, honestly. So that's out of the way. So here's one. You've seen me review this before. This is Dudes with Attitude. I finally completed it in its box. In really good condition, too. I owe, that's, that's kind of what I strive for with... Completing my collection is getting them complete in box. Not really the case for Ultimate Stuntman because it's kind of torn on the top a little bit, but hey, it was 20 bucks. I don't care. Um, no, actually, it was $10. I got, oh yeah, I actually got these. You can see it on my Instagram. I got this game, uh, Ultimate Stuntman, and Blackjack, all complete in box for just $10 each. <laughs> So yeah, Dudes with Attitude's complete, and now you saw Blackjack. And Blackjack is also a game that comes with its poster as well. Which, again, I've never even seen. Um, as much as I love unlicensed shit, I do find it kind of surprising every now and then that it comes with a poster that I have no idea. It's not really an impressive poster. Look, it's, it's very tiny. And it basically just advertises six games. And it also has them on the back. So that's pretty cool, you know? But yeah, everything about this game is mint. This is probably actually one of my most mint games. 
Uh, just give me one second. Um, I'm just gonna edit this out. This is taking fucking forever. Okay. So that's blackjack. Again, there's nothing. There's nothing special about it. It's just blackjack. You saw my review of Dudes of the Attitude. I clearly don't like that game. Um, I'll save the big NES game for last. So let's move on to some Nintendo 64 stuff. Now, spoiler alert. All of them are not for resale games. I've been noticing that these games in particular have been spiking up in value like no other, so... For like a brief moment, I stopped collecting NES and just kind of jumped to 64 and got these. Some of the most expensive ones out of the way and whatnot. But I'll take what I can get, you know? So I guess we'll start off with just this handful right here. Um, I got a Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, not for resale. Now, um, if, it, if it is a legitimate demo, I'll let y'all know, but there's nothing different. There's just that label right there. That's it. Fortunately, somebody took the sticker off in the back, so it's whatever. I kind of like those on the back. It makes it cooler. Um, same, same for this one. Pokemon Stadium, not for resale. No difference. Just the, just the label. Back and everything. There you go. Um, and this one, too. Yeah, I forgot. Super Mario 64, not for resale. It's got some dirty smudges up there, which sucks, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. So there's that. Um, here's a nice one. Here's a Star Fox 64, not for resale. It's got the red label right there. And it's got the Best Buy sticker on the back, too, which I find kind of cool. Yeah, this one's kind of rising up in value. It used to be like 60 to 80 bucks. Now it's like 100-something. Um, next, we have Legend of Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time, not for resale. It's really small. It's right there. This one also has its back sticker as well. Kind of torn, but at least it's got some writing right there, which is cool. Um, let's see. So, here's another one. Uh, Pokemon Snap, not for resale. The red label, because uh, there are two versions of it, which I have both. Um... And then here's something interesting. So a lot of people are kind of skeptical about these, but I've actually looked up on Nintendo Age that these are confirmed. These are actually, like, legit part of the Not For Resale pro products. Uh, Mario Party Not For Resale and Donkey Kong Not For Resale 64. Yellow cart, by the way. Um, they both have the stickers. And although people say you can make a reproduction of these, I've, I've actually never seen a case of that, so I don't know if that's valid or not, but... Um, I got these both from a collector on NA, Nintendo Age, so... And I find him trustworthy because he's actually a huge collector, and he said that he actually got these from a guy who owned, or who was a manager for Best Buy that had these. Um, so... I'm perfectly fine with that. These are confirmed, so... These are the only ones, too. Usually, all the other ones have the red label, but these didn't. But, these... This one has been going around for a while. It started off really big for, like, 400 bucks. Now it's, like, 125 And this is fairly new as well. This is, like, slowly rising up in value. It was, like, 80 bucks a few years ago, and now it's, like, 125 as well. Makes sense. Alright. And speaking of Mario Party... I also have Mario Party 2, not for resale, which is right there. Unfortunately, the pack is kind of fucked up, but you can still see the not for resale demo sticker on the back. And, uh, again, there's no differences. I'll point those out if they are, you know. And then there's Mario Party 3, not for resale, which is really clean, by the way. And again, no differences, just the label. Um, now let's move on to... Oh, I guess I can... I can Here's this one as well. Um, I've noticed that this one's kind of going up in <coughs> value as well. Excuse me, like I said, I'm sick. Uh, Mario Kart 64, not for resale. Yeah, mine's a little dirty, but it's whatever. I can just clean that off and it'll look perfectly fine. Except that sticker. It's pretty fucked up. But, yeah, um, I don't know why, but this one in particular has been going up in value a lot. I remember last year it was like 75 bucks, so it didn't quite bother me, but... Now it's like apparently 185, 200 selling from what I've seen. It's kind of strange. Um, is that all of them? 
All right, so I guess these are like my top three, I guess. Like, so um, here's one. Again, there's no differences. It's just a label, but it is it is pretty rare. Uh, Goldeneye uh, 64, which is interesting is that this one is just, just completely empty on the back, but that's whatever. It's just here it is, you know. Um, what's so rare about it? I don't know. There really isn't much history about the rarity of these games. We do know that they were obscure to begin with, and they're just now kind of getting the spotlight. So, when you think about it, these in, all of these were meant to be destroyed. Kind of like that test cart right there, except that was in the building. Different story, but kind of similar. These were made just to be in kiosks, and now they were meant to be pulled back when the retail game was released and then destroyed. But clearly they didn't. Rumor has it that only like a few thousand exist for some certain games, and maybe even less. For some, which makes sense. I mean, so these are blowing up in values. That's why I'm collecting these as fast as possible. And, uh, like I said, I do have this. The demo of Pokemon Snap. The Blockbuster demo. All of this is legit. Um, yeah, this one is kind of cool. It's, it's, um, it's just the first two levels. And then when you, uh, throw that Pokeball at the, uh, Oh god, I'm not good with Pokemon. The Electrode, um, he like explodes and blows up the wall for the cavern in the caverns and you can move on. And then it'll like interrupt the gameplay and says, do you want to see more? Go buy Pokemon Snap. And then it ends and you can't go any further. There's also pictures in this game that have been taken from the developmental team of either Nintendo or HAL, who knows, either one. And the, uh, they have pictures that are only in this that you can see compared to the retail version. Even that red not for resale doesn't have anything. It's just the retail version as well. This is actually legitimately rare. This is a very, very rare thing indeed. But it's cool. But it's, you know, it's just Pokemon Snap. And then, of course, this is probably my, my current Holy Grail of 64. This is my Donkey Kong 64 not for resale. Also with a back sticker that's basically perfect, along with the uh, front label of it as well. Yeah, this one's actually probably my favorite one as well. Not because it's rare and expensive, I don't give a shit about that, I collect to keep, but uh, it's cool because this thing is actually like, it ha it's not only a demo, but it has content in this game that was cut before the retail release. Like for example, there's a white balloon that indicates how many lives you have, so that's kind of badass. That's not in the retail game. The banana, when you collect a banana in the uh, railway, ra railway racing game, instead of indicating the heads who has bananas, they're just bananas. You know, they're, even the font's different. Um, there's also, like, the armadillo boss. You fight the second version from the Crystal Caverns, but on the first level, except it's his second form. And he has a voice. And he sounds fucking retarded. And I'm gonna do a review of this just to show it off. Cause it's, it was, I was so blown away. I had no idea, it was just, it made perfect sense why they cut it. And you also fight the dragonfly boss and he like, hot, okay, like in the game he like makes this snarl and throws the fireballs, but he hocks a loogie in this one. And he does it every fucking time, so it's incredibly annoying, but, and again, it makes sense why they cut it, but this is, uh, this is probably my favorite one. So, those are all out of the way. So, this is probably the highlight of this video. And I'm sure if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it already. Um, but, I actually have a legitimate copy of Peekaboo Poker, complete in its box. And, uh, let me open this up. Yep. Here it is. Peekaboo Poker, complete in its box. Even the back of it's really nice as well. All of it, you know? Yep, and here's the game. There it is. Peekaboo Poker. There's also the back. In perfect condition. Um, I'm very happy I have this game. Because I did not even think I would ever collect a Panesian game in my life. And hearing that... Um, Although the rave of bubble bath babes is for some odd reason going up in value, it's definitely not as rare as a uh, peekaboo poker. Close, but uh, no cigar. Um, it is cool though. 
I like this. This game is basically considered more rare than Cheatham in 2. Um, it is a very hard game to find, and it is also really hard to find this game complete in box. Um, I would say they both technically cost around the same, but as it, when it comes to rarity, you will find less peekaboo pokers than Cheetah Mintu. I can assure you that. Um, but in my personal opinion, though, as weird as this is to say, um, I actually find uh, I actually find this game less rare than Cheetah Mintu because I got this first. That's that's the only reason why. But um, other than that, yeah. Peekaboo Poker. Now I gotta go get Bubble Bath Babes and Hot Slots. And then I gotta get a Cheatham in two. And then a Myriad 6 and 1. And I'm trying to get all those complete in box. Try to get every NES game complete in box. And uh, currently, as you can see, I don't really have license yet. But unlicensed, I'm really, I'm actually there. This game kind of, okay, like, this game's kind of, like, hilariously bad in a way, like, and it's not because of the game itself. It's just poker. You really can't bash on poker because it's poker. You know what I mean? But what's cool about it, though, is that um, you can... <coughs> not cool, but like what's funny about it is that this is probably the worst idea to make an adult video game off of. I mean, like, okay. I guess if you're going to jump into a perverted mind for a second, if you were actually going to make a game for an obvious intention to jerk off to, why the fuck would you make it poker? You know what I mean? I don't understand that. I played through this game, and um, it's it's just poker. And every $1,000 you get, you get to see, like, a tease. And then when you get another $1,000, then you actually see nudity. And it's it's just not, like, if I was, like I said, if I was to be a pervert, it wouldn't even be worth it. Because there, it, this is just absolutely retarded. This is like two thousand dollars of just nothing. Like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Oh yeah, and the names of these women. You, there's three different uh, women that you go against. You got Full House Francine, Poker Penny, and Double Dealing Debbie. Yeah, the, the, this is the quality. In fact, here's here's some good quality right here. Uh, copy Rigget Pain Chin. And then it says, all Rigget reserved. So, apparently, since they didn't copyright this game, because I don't know what the fuck copy Rigget is, I could just make this game and sell it as my own. <laughs> I mean, I'm, if I wanted to. It's cool, though. It's actually a unique <clears throat> piece of history, I guess. And the artwork's pretty fucking weird, too. You got, uh, oh, the glare's annoying. Um... Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so, like, you got, like, women right there who are clearly, like, live action, and then you got animated men back there. You know, it's just, it's just fucking weird to look at. But, um, out of all of these, though, this is probably the rarest one. And then second being Bubble Bath Babes, and then third being Hot Slots. That's basically my collection. And that's an update so far because that's that's really it. Um, I am working on my videos. I'm trying to get things up as fast as possible. This is kind of like an update video to let you know that I'm not I'm not dicking around here. I'm actually like legitimately busy at the moment and you know, like I said, we had this hurricane. My mom is still ill and I'm taking care of her and school. So it's it's very busy. And I'm trying to make the best of it as I can. But there I will do more of this often. I do have a lot of time to spare and a lot of money to blow on video games. So um, there will be actually another update collection video soon because I just ordered a bunch of cool stuff. And I, like I said, unfortunately it didn't arrive here on time, but it'd be cool to add with these video games. But yeah, you know, there'll be, there'll be another one and then there'll be more. I will finish my collection soon. Like, it's just how it is. Um, um, as it comes to videos though, I am working on one. As you can see at the last of my video, I have it on Freeway for the Atari 2600. It is written and it is fully complete. Um, and all I have to do is shoot it now. And I also need to work with the green screen. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, and then there's another video because it seems like I've been making so many videos lately that are like five to eight or ten minutes long and I want to get going with like longer videos 
So my next video after this one is going to be roughly 20, 22 minutes or something like that. So that's really it. All right, guys, that's that's my update video right there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed.